let me tell you about my county. This is the fictional county of Strifok. 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 Um, in a game called Foundation that I've been playing. Foundation is a, a city builder, a settlement builder, a village builder. A, co a colony sim? I don't think it's a colony sim. You do have... You do have little guys. And you do have some control over them directly, but not very much. Mostly, it's about building buildings. Um, but I wouldn't call it a city builder. It's not quite at that scale. Uh, and what I've built here is definitely not a city. It is more, as the title says, like, I think, like a county, or that's what I've gone for. Um, and yeah, this game, Foundation, it certainly I exists within a genre and certainly you can uh, draw some lines to it from other games in the genre in the past. I think Banished is certainly a relatively recent city builder that's been very influential on this like small scale city builder genre and I think this definitely follows from that but Foundation does a lot of other things. Uh, that are different from how Banish does things, but also different from how a lot of city builders do things. And if you've played some classic city builders, you'll might have noticed some of those already just from looking at this game running. Um, but yeah, I want to talk a bit about what this game is, what it does different, uh, and what that leads to, and what I really like about it. Um, and, and the thing that I'm going to lead off with is what I really like about it, and that this is a game that's about places with stories, or at least the way I play it, the way I like to play it. It's about places with stories. It really facilitates telling stories about places and building places that reflect the stories of their construction. Uh, and that's something that I think is part of a lot of city builders in some ex to some extent. You know, you're telling the story of your city as you build it. Um, and the final state of your city reflects, you know, the story of its building in some ways. But not all of them really lean into that. This game really leads into that. And I like that a lot. I really was thinking about this as I was getting ready to make this video. And thinking about how much I like stories about places. Um, you know, I don't, I like people. But I also really like places. I'm really interested in, in archaeology and in architecture and in landscape architecture and in cities and in settlements and in you know the built environment and what things people build and why they build them and where they build them and all that sort of stuff and i love those stories about places um and this is a game that i feel like really lets you tell stories about places and make interesting places so that's what i'm gonna do a bit of here is i'm gonna tell some of the stories of some of the places that I've built uh, on this playthrough of this game which has been out for a while in early access now like a lot of <laughs> like a lot of feels like there's a huge swath of this kind of game city builders settlement builders colony sims in early access at the moment on their way from small developers into development and we'll talk a bit about that we'll talk about the game what I like about it what I maybe don't like about it um, and we'll talk about the story so let's talk about the first place, this is sort of the first settlement, the heart of this whole county. This little pile of crates here is the first thing you place in the game. But yeah, this is the county of Strifok, and this is Stifok Hill, with no R, because I made a spelling mistake, but then I kept it. I enjoy, like, naming stuff in, in this game is fun. Um, and yeah, this was a little, like, my thought, this hill initially was, you know, going to be my little, oh, this was a little, you know, there was a hill settlement here dating back to some pre-medieval point. And eventually that turns into a little medieval settlement over time. There was some more industry here that eventually gave way to this lovely market, Strifok Hill Market, in the middle here. And this is a, this little church here, which I quite like. This is, um, New St. Gimon's church and old St. Gimon's is tucked away 
around the corner here. Here it is. This is Old St. Jumon's. This was the first church that I built on this map, which was like the smallest, the smallest that I could make it and have it still seem like a church a little bit. I think it's really cute. I enjoy it. Um, so yeah, this, this I built initially, and then as the game developed over time, eventually New St. Jumon's uh, was built. And then over here, this is... um. This is Strifical. Strifical? Strifical? Strifolk? What is this one? How is it spelled here? Strifolk Hall. This one does have the R in it. So this is like the county seat uh, in some ways, I guess. So this is my. This is the first settlement that I built here. Um, this was sort of the start of everything. And the way that I try to play this game, I'll get into more depth about this, is trying to take advantage of the ways that this game is sort of org organic is the wrong word. So let's just talk about roads, right? We have to talk about, we're going to talk about stories and places with stories and cute little towns with names that I've made up uh, and, and cute churches that I've built. But we also need to talk about, about roads and like city builders and roads are, you know, roads are such a core mechanic in every city builder that you can think of. City builders are about building roads. The first thing you build in most city builders is a road. Uh, in SimCity, you're building roads. In in Banished, you're building roads. Uh, in the Anno games, roads. Um, you start out with roads and you have to put things next to roads and that's how you build everything. And that's just the paradigm, right? Like, that's just... I'm sure there are games that don't quite do it that way. I guess the Settlers games kind of don't. But roads are such a core mechanic of these games. And Foundation decided that... That sucks, actually. Actually, building roads is bullshit. And it sucks. And so you don't ever build roads <laughs> in this game. You just place buildings. And then your your little, little guys, your little friends, um, will will go way they want to go and when a lot of them go the same way a lot of the time they do sort of prefer to go ways that people have gone before uh it'll end up being a road so all of these roads snaking around everywhere are roads that are made by people going between buildings that exist somewhere already for a reason um, and so that's how i sort of built out from from here i started up on this little hill and then I started placing things out on the map to spread things out and to make my guys make roads. And, and you don't get to choose where they make those roads. They're going to, you know, navigate around obstacles in the terrain a little bit. And there's a little bit of randomness to it as well, I think. And then based on where those roads were, that was informing where I was expanding to next. And also, you know, resources and things like that. So, um... Oh yeah, I'm just I'm glad to get my notes here and seeing that like si I put wrote down City Skylines. City Skylines two just came out, and City Skylines is a game about building roads. City Skylines two is a game about building roads. Like there's other stuff going on, and I'm not just you know dunking on those games and saying oh roads, um, those are great games and you can do a lot of fun stuff with them. I've tried playing City Skylines in the way that I've played this year in terms of like trying to slowly and quasi realistically have things build up from small beginnings into more dense more urbanized situations and and found it sort of difficult and artificial to do this game facilitates that kind of play that i like a lot better um which is cool so this is stiffa kill this is the first little little settlement here um and you know it's got the market in the center of town and then over on this side of town we got some some sheeps, uh, some uh, and some uh, some cloth making industry over here, and then on this other side of town we have uh, some more agriculture. We have some mills and some farming, some hops growing here, and then we go down the hill into another little town. This is uh, Rockwell. This is Rockwell, and this is uh, you'll see in the middle of town here. These are all stone working huts. Um, these are all people cutting cutting rocks into blocks and stacking them up. This is a big quarry town. Uh, 
Lovely little church. What's this church called? I'm going to turn the uh, interface on so I can read church names as I go here. This is St. Dorothy's. Oh, yeah, I forgot to say, I love um, evolving. Go away. Evolving the names of things. So this old St. Gmon's, this was originally called uh, the Chapel of St. Saint Gmon or something. But over time, I sort of changed the names of, of named churches and buildings in a way and sort of trying to reflect like the evolution of language in this place that I'm building. So once this church is built as new St. Gmon's, this becomes old St. Gmon's. Um, and this church was originally called St. Dorothea's. I look at the names of my early villagers. The vi villagers are generated with names when they arrive, and I look at some of those names to get some, you know, some of those become saints' names. So this is St. Dorothea's, but then becomes St. Dorothy's over time. Uh, so yeah, this was a little, you know, quarry town. These stone deposits on either side of town here. Um, and some, some lumber industry as well down here. This is sort of feeding up into as this uh, Stiffak Hill expands, this little town grows up here with various industry that feeds it. Built this nice pub here, the Two Sisters, which I quite like. I like the name as well because, you know, I found that there was this bridge feature in the game and I was like, oh, I have to make a pub with a bridge. And it looks weird out here in the middle of nowhere, not really surrounded by anything. Um, but it is really cute. Anyway, I like the name The Two Sisters because there's like the two buildings, but then also it's, you know, between these two uh, sort of rocky promontories here that are close by. I like that. Over on the edge of town here, I have this very grand church, St. Thalassus. This is like a bit of a... It's, it's, a, it's a pretty church. I'm happy with it, with how it came out. Um, but it is a bit of a white elephant. I sort of built this out here and no one uses it. Um, it was kind of, it was an attempt to relieve pressure from a church that was overcrowded elsewhere in the county. Didn't really work, but we'll get to that story a bit later. Um, so yeah, it's, it's sort of out here on its own, and that leads me to talk about one of the other things about this game that makes it different. I talked about the, you know, not building roads part of it as being something that really sets it apart from other city builders. And the other thing that sets it apart in a big way is that you don't build houses in this game. You don't build residential structures. All you build is places where people work or places where people go to meet some needs. So you build these, you know, warehouses, you build stonemasons huts, you build pubs, you build churches, you build, uh, you know, little administrative buildings. Um, and resource extraction buildings. And then you let people decide where to build houses. There's this paintbrush mode here where you just paint out. I mean, it looks sort of like a bit of a mess. A beautiful mess at the moment. But you just designate where people are allowed to build houses and they will build them wherever they want. And the way that I've been playing this game, uh, this playthrough, is pretty much letting people build houses wherever they want to. And that generally means they're going to build houses close to where they work, which is fine. And then if you meet certain needs, the houses will upgrade into, uh, you know, from being these like plaster and thatch wood frame houses into being these uh, sort of nice like stone and uh, timber frame uh, with tiled houses and things like that. Uh, they'll sort of upgrade of their own accord, um, which is like a, that is a mechanic that's in a lot of other city builders, right? Like housing uh, gets... Uh, upgraded quote unquote there's some there's some ideology at play uh in many aspects there about like uh class and housing and all sorts of things anyway you don't choose where houses get built people build houses near work people don't really build houses near church you know it's sort of an interesting thing that i sort of observed as i was playing this game more is you know you build this church out here and like things don't pop up around this church organically right when you build a mine and get it working and some you know or you build a market or you build you know a little like thing like this and get it working